and in Brooklyn senior trial counsel and former prosecutor Bernarda Villalona. Bernarda, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. All right, so the sentencing phase, that's what's next for Derek Chauvin. And folks are skeptical, and understandably so, right, that Chauvin will see any significant time. What we know about the sentencing phase is that the judge will be deciding what that number will be and not the jury. So Chauvin decided to go with the judge for sentencing. What do you think the strategy was behind that decision? So in regards to the Blakely factors, what the Chauvin decided to do was, you know what, I'm not going to take a chance with the jury because I already know where you stand because you've already convicted me. So that was a decision that was made beforehand between Chauvin and Eric Nelson. Why would he roll the dice with the jury when he already knows that they've already convicted him? So now he's trying for a new judge being Judge Cahill to actually make that decision. So what's going to happen here? We know that in the state of Minnesota, there are sentencing guidelines. So for murder in the second degree, it is up to 40 years that Derek Chauvin can be sentenced to. However, because it's based on a gravity and a sentencing grid, because Chauvin has no prior record and his maximum number in grade is a 10, the presumptive sentence for him is 12 and a half years in prison for murder in the second degree. But break it down even further. Out of those 12 and a half years in Minnesota, you're only going to serve uh, two thirds of those 12 and a half years. So in reality, on the presumptive sentence, all Derek Chauvin is looking at really is eight years and some change for taking the life away from a human being. So that is why the prosecution in this case is seeking an upward departure, meaning, you know what, Judge, I know what the sentencing guidelines are. I know that it says go for 12 and a half years. However, Derek Chauvin's acts are so egregious, are so cold, are so disheartening, were so torturous that he should be sentenced to something much higher because he does not deserve a break in this case. And if that is the case, then that's a huge discretion that the judge has. So from 12 and a half to 40 years now that he can sentence Derek Chauvin to. So we'll see that in the next, in the next couple of weeks of where's Judge Cahill going to land in that guideline from 12 and a half to 40 years. Right. So, I mean, the prosecutors are definitely going for an aggravated sentence and trying to establish that there were aggravating factors in this case. Okay, so what do you think this guilty verdict means for the other three officers who's, who've been charged with aiding and abetting murder and manslaughter and whose trials are coming up in August? Now, should they sever? Should they, you know, make a change of venue or motion for a change of venue, motion to continue? I mean, should they be taking plea bargains? I know if I were... Uh, one of the defendants, I'd be running to my lawyer and saying, listen, we've got to re-up on, on talking about a plea bargain because that guilty verdict, I think, will definitely uh, have an effect, an effect, an impact on their case. Absolutely. And you know that these three former officers were watching the case on a daily basis. They did not miss one minute of this case because the same evidence that was submitted on behalf of Derek Chauvin to convict them will be the similar evidence that will be presented for these three officers for them to be convicted with the addition that their body worn cameras with the audio will be presented to the jury. So they are facing the similar charges with the exception that is aiding and abetting. So with aiding and abetting, you are being held liable for the same crime as the principal, the person who put the knee on the neck of George Floyd, as if you would have done it yourself. So it's like in for a penny, in for a pound. You aided, you helped him, you succeeded in him taking the life away from George Floyd, so you're going down too. But at this point, these three former officers should be running to the prosecutor and be like, what can you offer me? What I'm curious, <laughs> Rodine, is is whether the prosecutor tried to flip them and they were like, no, 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 I'm not testifying against Derek Chauvin. I'd rather, I'd rather take yeah. my chances at trial.